Singapore is known for being a sporting nation, and a lot of people have said we'll never win the Olympic gold medal. This 21-year-old Singaporean, Joseph Schooling, what a superstar. History might come in the form of Singapore's Joseph Schooling. Everyone knows the Olympics is the biggest thing. This young man, he has a very strong sense of history and legacy. It takes a tough, courageous person to handle that pressure. Everyone is watching, and that's the pinnacle for athletes. He has been so impressive, and now he finds himself in the fastest lane. Keep your nerves, keep composed. Now, the scene is set. And having to execute everything that I trained for, that was probably the biggest moment in my life. My name is Joseph Schooling. Growing up in Singapore, I used to live in the East Coast, close to the beach. I had my first competition when I was four, and it was little 25 meter races. I think I bagged like 10 medals. I didn't know what that meant at that point. You see all these parents going nuts. It's kind of funny. I love racing. And from a young age, I had that feeling. I hated to lose. He was a happy baby, very happy baby, very easy to look after. He loved the water. Every holiday we go, it's like he stays in the water. It happened in her hometown. He was about eight years old. And 4.30 in the morning, he woke me up. He said, what's happening, son? He said, I've got to go for training. I said, you got to go for what? For an eight-year-old to wake you up at 4.30 in the morning, that is special. Very special. And then I took him seriously. Every meet that he swam was documented. You could see a pattern how he was advancing. Then every year, I will put the times he had to achieve. Target that I put him against the American 4As, Triple As, then the Malaysian record, the Singapore junior records, the school records, his PBs, and his goal. Singapore, because it's a young nation, they were concentrating on building the country. We don't have enough competitions. I needed to go to a different level of training to improve myself. And the only way to do that you know, was to go overseas. My dad hosted the US Olympic team in 2008. Before they went to Beijing, they stopped over in Singapore. Every coach he asked pointed to Bolds in Jacksonville, Florida, under Sergio Lopez. It was definitely a little intimidating coming from a smaller country. That was the first time I've been in the US, first time away from my parents. Honestly, I hated it my first year. Just hated it. But for a 13-year-old kid, I was in boarding school. I was a little spoiled in Singapore as a kid. Never had to pick up after myself. Never had to do dishes, laundry, those kind of things. It was a, it was a huge awakening. And it taught me to mature real quick. It taught me to grow up. Not every parent can afford this kind of thing. I sacrificed my business. But that's my choice. It was nobody else's choice. I don't want to be the richest man in the cemetery. Eh? It was difficult. We only have one son. Always ask him, so you want to come back? No. He might cry, he might what, but no, mom. If I come back, I'm not going to get to the Olympics. That was his target. I wanted to make an Olympic final. I wanted to be top eight, and I thought I could, especially in that 200 fly. I can still remember walking into that call room. Michael's in my heat, 200 fly. I looked up, she was just looking right at me. And you know, for a 17 year old kid to see Michael Phelps staring him down, um, that, that was definitely something. I had lofty expectations for myself. I did some really good training up to then. I think that was the most disappointing part. I thought it was going to be the end of the world, and I started panicking. And once you start panicking, you lose track of things, you lose focus. 
and everything goes down from there. That was probably one of the most horrible experiences of my life up till now. I guess I wasn't old enough and I wasn't experienced enough to put that behind me and continue doing what I, what I was gonna do. For the next six months, I was, you know, in and out of it. I didn't want to swim anymore. I didn't want to go through it. I wasn't focused at all. I remember falling down. I think I broke my ankle. So things like that. I'm glad I could have great people around me to dig me out of that hole. Sergio, after a while, got pretty mad that I wasn't bouncing back from it. I remember it was Thanksgiving in 2012. We had a huge falling out. We didn't speak to each other for a couple weeks. And I think that was when my wake up call came. In hindsight, I'd say experience would be the biggest thing that I was lacking, but I'm glad it happened. It helped me mature as an athlete and a person. Those are the kind of setbacks we need sometimes to find out what we're really made of. To say, all right, if you really want to do this, put it behind you, start moving on. The clock resets every four years. By the time I arrived in 2016, I've been to every major games there is, and I raced against everyone that I competed in the Olympic final. So I knew what to expect. Actually, we were planning not to go. We said we'll watch you from home. Of course, my son said, Mom, I'm going on the podium. You're not coming? <laughs> That's how confident he was. Can you imagine? I'll tell you something. 20 minutes before he swam, Trace Times interviewed me. What would you wish to say to Joseph? I will tell Joseph to stun the world. Just stun it. And that I love you. That's all. I still remember how it felt before the 100 fly final. Four years of work coming down to this one moment. There were just so many feelings. The combination of being anxious, being nervous, excited. Very emotional. Singapore so, stopped. Even my friends were playing Everything. golf. They all stopped and went to view it on their handphone. And then the schools. They had it shown, factories stop work so that their workers can watch. Singapore's top. Literally. Thank you, Schooling's reaction time is the best by far of everyone, and he starts well again. Schooling's looking good and right on that world record time. He's transferred the form that he showed in the heats into the semi-final and into the final. And he's a body length clear almost. Can he hold on? We were hoping to see history in the pool, but we are history because Singapore has won an Olympic gold medal and an Olympic record time. Joseph Schooling, simply sensational. I was overjoyed for him. You couldn't have written a better story, you know. Greatest Olympian of all time exiting, and you beat him. A, a three-way tie at the end. It was a very touching moment. First time we see our national anthem being sang at the Olympics. Well, that was really, that touched my heart, and so did my fellow Singaporeans. A lot of them were very emotional. It was so surreal. We arrived like 5 a.m. in the morning. The whole Changi Airport was full of people. There were people everywhere. 
He was in the papers everywhere. The response that I got back home was a better feeling than winning. It was definitely an emotional roller coaster ride coming back for all the festivities. On the deck, we call him the King of Singapore, the Prince of Singapore, just to mess with him because we knew we knew he was a celebrity, but we didn't know like the gravity or the, the magnitude of it. And then when we hit we touched down in Singapore, you know, there's people that usher him from this place to that place, you know, get his bags, but bodyguards, everything. He was like a movie star. I didn't think the reception would be as huge as it was. It was that nuts because something like that has never happened before. It's great to see huge support pouring in, not only from the government, but from the people. Previously, we haven't been a sporting nation at all. So to see this glimmer of hope for the sporting scene in Singapore, I think that's excited a lot of people, and they're doing everything they can to help more people get to that point. I think he's really kind of shown that culture that you don't have to be a doctor, a lawyer, for a successful businessman, you know, there's success outside of those mediums, and he's and he's achieved it to the fullest extent. An Olympic gold medal for such a young country, it's incredible. After Rio and after he won, and set the Olympic record. He had accomplished all his life goals. He had to reset more goals. And we didn't catch that until first semester was almost gone. He had a rough first semester getting back into work. But if you can imagine at age 20, your life goals in the sport of swimming have been answered. Olympic gold medal, Olympic record. I mean, that's unheard of because he had never even finaled in the Olympics. And he just stepped up, qualified first after the heats, first after the semifinals. I was scared to death. And then he won. And so that's been the main thrust, trying to get, get over that and get back in the if you want to get better, you got to work harder. His parents have been positive with him, and I think that may be the most important thing that parents could do or should do. You got to get it somewhere so that you keep striving to get better. And May and Colin are excellent at that. I always tell him, whatever you do, you're doing for yourself. It's not for me. You just have to support them. There's That's no fixed formulation. It's a sacrifice that you've got to be willing to take. We were lucky because Joseph met some of the best coaches in the yeah. world. Eh? Sergio Lopez was a coach that was good but, for development. And then Eddie Rees brought him to another level. All I want to do is get him to go faster. If I can do that, that'll take care of everything else. And he's nowhere near as fast as he can go. My love for racing is the biggest reason why I get out of bed in the morning. I hate, hate practice, I'm not gonna lie, but I know that if I want to get to that point, you're gonna do whatever it takes to be the best. I'm looking forward to starting this new part of my life and trying to inspire as many people as I can to do things that previously thought I couldn't do.